You co-founded a startup called Open Sensors IO. Talk a little bit about how that came about and what problem you're aiming to solve. I started, or uh, myself and Malcolm Sparks, my co-founder, started Open Sensors uh, just a year and a bit ago. And originally it came out of my frustration of, of not being able to find real-time air quality data. So uh, my oldest has asthma. And I was quite convinced that air, the air quality particulates were impacting her attacks. And I wanted to kind of have a way of, of planning for the day. But, um, and I thought it would be quite obvious that somewhere someone would be able to provide me with, with these real-time data sets. And, um, and, and it didn't exist to my surprise. So I decided to create one as, as, as an engineer would. Um, and, and here we are now, kind of we're trying to create uh, a bit of a real-time data exchange uh, for, for the Internet of Things. I think when we started, you know, kind of Internet of Things wasn't a thing. Right. Um, and um, I, this, this kind of crazy frustration project has become a company now, which is quite surprising to my surprise. And so how important do you think open data will be to the future of the Internet of Things? And what role do you see it playing? Um, I think it's, it's you know, well, hugely important, but in a sense that we're digitizing these cities and we're, we, we, you know, either individuals and groups or, or uh, the local authorities and governments are, are starting to kind of roll out sensor networks and um, you're going to get in a situation very quickly where, you know, on the street, if you don't have uh, the data accessible by many people, under kind of clear license terms. You're going to have a situation where you're going to have to put the same hardware multiple times so that y for multiple uses. So um, it kind of instinctively makes sense to me um, from, I suppose, the open source background that, you know, kind of the, if you're going to have public hardware that's uh, out there, that it, it should be used many, many times. It just seems efficient. Um, and kind of the least expensive way forward, hopefully. <laughs> right. And you mentioned the sensor networks. In a recent talk, you were talking about the challenge of semantics, or lack thereof, mm -hmm. in sensor networks. Um, what What is the disconnect there, and what do you think is driving that? Um, I think it's just a hard problem, and trying to get people to agree on on a semantic for, you know, if you're if you have a connected light, what data are you actually sending me? Uh, if you're saying that you have uh, an air quality monitor, what are you sending? What does that mean? Is that dust particulates? You know, is it, what is that? Is is kind of is a hard challenge to get people to agree. Um, one of the one of the projects that I've been experimenting with is called Frink, which is uh, F R I N K, uh, and it's a very interesting. Um, it's, it, it really kind of goes down to the unit of measure. Uh, so it's not really an IoT specific project, but I, I find that it might be um, at least a start to the solution. It might not be the whole solution, but uh, it concentrates on kind of uh, the units of measure, and then there's a standard way of converting between you know Celsius and Fahrenheit and, and so on. And also there is a lot of like sampling rates of parts per million, um, so that we have a standard way to kind of say, well, okay, this thing because for most sensor net, for most sensors, there you know it's, it's voltage outputs uh, that we're interpreting or some kind of gas measure. So um, it makes sense to have some way of, of kind of tying it all together. And, I, and I, I'm quite enthusiastic about Frink at this stage. We've used it for a couple of projects, and it seems to be at least uh, going in the right way. Might not be the whole solution, but yeah. And you've recently released a new feature called Open Sensors Orgs. Is that feature also aiming to mitigate the sensor network problem? Um, that's more for the hardware manufacturers. Okay. Um, so, um, what we found was that a lot of the um, hardware manufacturers were basically, when they when they create uh, or when they manufacture uh, a sensor or a bunch of sensors, like hundred sensors in, in a factory. Um, they needed a way to manage how you know kind of a one-to-one -one relationship with with the customers as they sent it out so if you think of uh what amazon do with kindles they kind of have serial ids so they they, they batch uh so you know the, the factory says you know i've i've created 
uh, ID 1 to, 1 to 100, and then when a customer buys it, they'll say, well, I've got device number one, and I'm going to associate it with myself. And then people can see whether these devices are alive and, 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 and functioning. And you know, um, So really, it's, it's, it's kind of trying to enable the hardware uh, manufacturers on, on different scales uh, to, to put their products out to market. So. OK, all right. So shifting gears just a little bit, sure. uh, Open Sensors is now a part of the Open Data Institute's startup program. Talk a little bit about what that experience is like, and, and how did that happen? Um, so the Open Data Institute was founded by Sertan Berners-Lee and Nigel Schabot maybe a couple of years ago as, uh, as, a, as a way to, to convince uh, you know, governments, especially governments, uh, to to create open data, to open up their data, and, and they've been hugely successful. Um, so we're we're incubated uh, in in the ODI, and it's been really helpful because I suppose our, there there are two things. One is being in the middle of other like-minded people that actually understand fundamentally what you're trying to do and have probably done it for other for other things before. So you could say, you know, what kind of learn more about licensing and, and so on. Um, and and uh, the second thing is fundamentally, you know, as a startup, you want people to take you seriously. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it kind of the ODI brings uh, under that umbrella kind of quite a lot of local authorities and, you know, big government agencies. And, and, and surprisingly, they actually end up listening to you, you know, tell you what to do, <laughs> which is, which is um, yeah, I think that, that Open Data Institute just enables all, all the stuff to come together. So it's been really, really helpful. Excellent. And so to close our conversation, I want to I want to go with a, a broad question. Um, what projects and people are you following these days? What kinds of things are you finding personally intriguing? Oh, God, there's so many. <laughs> um, I mean, there are there are some projects around uh, deploying large numbers of sensor networks, so upwards of ten thousand or more in one in one rollout. And I'm finding um, those interesting. So there is um, there's a company called Air Sensor. They're they're rolling out ten thousand air quality sensors just in the UK alone. And I think from a logistics point of view, I think that's interesting because many people are talking about you know quote unquote smart cities, but we're not really discussing the maintenance side, like if you're going to roll out these sensor networks, who's going to change it when, when you know, if you've got 10,000 of these things, it, they will break quite often, who's going to change this stuff, you know, with a ladder and a van, and um, so the kind of the practical IoT uh, of, of people that are actually doing interesting projects is it's quite thin on the ground, I have to say there's a lot of kind of, quite a lot of marketing. Um, and then the other side is obviously like the security side, um, there are security chips, uh, the security chips that are coming out, and they're really interesting. And, and I think there's not enough discussion about how to how to secure your home network uh, or, or whatever. And, and uh, these are the things that I'm I'm starting to learn about and starting experimenting. So. Yeah, it's all very quite complicated. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you very much for talking with me today. And thank you, Jen.